Hi, I'm Willemijn, and I'll be presenting the paper on the role of material experience for novel interactions with digital representations of historical pop-up and movable books. The paper is co-authored by Jeff Love, Stephen Oparisi, and Elvin Karana. Galleries, libraries, archives, and museums, in short GLAM, have long been welcoming environments to deploy and test novel human-computer interactions. On the one hand, as a means to, for these institutions to enable engagement and learning with their collections, but also as a real-world testing ground for novel technologies. Objects held by these in these institutions' collections are generally delicate and valuable, meaning visitors and researchers are often deprived of fully experiencing them through touch, sight and other senses. Sensory perceptions, which directly influence the meanings, emotions and actions elicited from people in interaction with artifacts. In other words, what makes up material experience. Ongoing digitization of collections further challenges our direct experience of their materiality, which archaeologist Colin Renfrew dubbed the dematerialization of material culture. Furthermore, we must recognize that one physical object can have multiple valid narratives, where the artifact's experience is created between an individual and an artifact, which cultural anthropologist Maurstad phrased as relational materiality, also noting that experiences are influenced by one's prior experience and perspective. In short, it's recognized within cultural heritage domain broadly that materiality and material experience are very relevant, but currently not well addressed with our predominantly digital and hands-off encounters. Continuous technological developments nowadays provide researchers and designers with an elaborate toolbox to reenact and enhance interactions with cultural heritage through visible, tangible and multisensory augmentations. In studying existing digitally mediated cultural heritage experiences, we can identify numerous cases that incorporate material aspects of artifacts, specifically their sensorial characteristics, and some also imitating the interactions with originals. Though many cases seem solely to strive for as realistic as possible, or are rather technology driven. As such, we identified a research gap that across these studies, studies limited insight is provided how designers make choices about which and how aspects of materiality and material experience are considered in designing cultural heritage experiences. To this end, we set off to first firstly characterize the material experience of cultural heritage artifacts and secondly explore how such insight might inspire novel interactions with digital representations. To characterize material experience, we look towards the already existing material experience framework. It was developed in conjunction with the material driven design method, primarily envisioned to be used to support designing with emerging materials, such as interactive smart materials, but later on also living materials. In this study, we transfer this framework to the domain of cultural heritage, but also acknowledge that similar notions on material experience already pre-existed and are actively discussed in, for instance, material, uh, material culture and museum studies. Within the framework, we initially focus on material encounters relationship linking people and materials, as everyday performances are deemed less relevant for many cultural heritage experiences. In our study, we also utilize the described material experience levels, consisting of four interrelated levels, namely the sensorial level, how materials get sensed, the performative level, actions that are elicited by materials, the effective level, emotions elicited by materials, and finally, the interpretive level, meanings invoked by materials. To explore the characterization of material experience of cultural heritage artifacts, we chose to investigate pop-up and movable books for their performative potential, their dynamic visual effects, aka their temporal materiality, but also their relative, in relative inaccessibility via conventional means of digitization. Pop-up books are a type of novelty book which literally pop up when pages are opened or, or something is pulled. Movable books are 
have all kind of movable elements that can be manipulated by the reader. Such book types have, long have a long tradition, which can be traced back as early as the 13th century. F 14th and 15th century examples also exist, for instance, of anatomical books with flaps and interactive astronomical charts, as one as can be seen on this slide. From the 19th century onwards, relatively simple pop-up and movable books were also created for children, which continued developing to very elaborate versions in the last two decades or so. For the experiment, experiential material characterizations of pop-up and movable books, we set up a combined observation and interview study. In this study, we included two types of research artifacts, 10 physical um, pop-up and movable books with original items from the 1960s, but also various contemporary books. Next to this, participants also interacted with an already existing virtual reality experience featuring four historical pop-up and movable books. For this study, we recruited 27 adults and 7 children, between the latter between the age of 4 and 10, to partake in our study. Uh, specifically, this latter category was, was included because they are actually the intended audience for these type of books. And we were curious to see if there were any differences in their actions and experience. The 27 adults that partook uh, interacting with both the physical books and the VR experience in randomized order. The children only engage with the physical books. All participants were invited to freely explore the research artifacts, speak aloud during their interactions. Uh, following every part, they were interviewed. In the interviews, we asked all participants about their overall experience, their material experience of the books, and we asked the adults to compare the experience of the virtual and the physical books. The observation uh, videos and interview data were transcribed and coded um, using the material experience level as main themes. Here you can see some interactions that participants had with the physical books. Interaction with the physical books came naturally with no instructions needed, not even for the youngest participants. A noticeable difference between the two groups is that the children were far more likely to engage with the narrative of the books, requesting their guardians to read them aloud, in comparison to the adults who mostly engage with the mechanisms. Here is an overview of all the different types of interactions that could be observed. They are clustered per interactive element type and, describe, and also describe their temporal patterns that could be observed such as the actions taking place slowly versus quickly, or, react or actions being repeated. If we zoom in, we see all the interactions participants had with pop-up elements, ranging from moving the books around or moving themselves around, or otherwise manipulating the pop-up elements. This altogether can be denoted as the per performativity of the books. We also coded the data for the on the other experiential levels, the data is clustered around five material qualities, partially building on earlier work on material experience of books and partially emerging from the data. One such material quality is the ability of paper to fold, aka the foldability. These characteristics are summarized in diagrams, as seen here, taken from the experiential material characterization toolkits. In the three concentric circles, we list characteristics on the performative, sensorial, interpretive and affective levels and their interrelationships. Some examples of how the data links to the characteristics of foldability is as follows. So people describe slightly opening and closing the pages, which, which refers to these repetitive actions, which could also be observed. Uh, somebody comments on their excitement or um, um, anticipation of uh, wanting to look what's on the next page. Uh, somebody describes the pop-ups as something that explodes out of the page. Uh, but uh, participants also comment on some books re reading being rather monotonous in, in their style of, of pop-ups. 
uh, which actually led to boredom. The other identified material qualities are the slideability of paper, which has characteristics like being toy-like and fun, uh, terribility with characteristics such as the ripping and scratching sound of the paper, uh, people showing very slow and careful movements and them expressing a fear of damaging the books. Um, another quality is the ageability, where people refer to the signs of, of wear, uh, the smell of old books, uh, but also just the qualification of the book being old. Uh, and finally, the printability. Of course, the printability of paper leading to very colorful books, uh, but people also are saying that they, they find this very nostalgic, but in some cases also quite overwhelming and confusing due to the very busy uh, patterns and, and colors used. With these experiment, experiential characterizations clustered around these five material qualities, we set out the design and prototype experiences aiming to enhance the material experience making use of extended reality technology. The first uh, is a mixed reality uh, experience. In this experience, we aim to enable mimetic interactions, where physically turning the page and being able to otherwise manipulate a dummy book um, was synchronized with the digital content. The prototype combines a mixed reality headset with a dummy book with printed black and white markers. And the rest of the image in the book is, is decorative. As the reader opens the book and turns the page, the pop-ups are visualized as an overlay onto the physical world. And the movable parts can be interacted with via eye tracking functionality, though preferably we would have liked to rely on hand tracking as that would, would have been more mimetic. On several pages, we also experimented with enhancing the material experience beyond the look and feel of the original book. On one of the pages, we aim to enhance the surprise effect and and trigger repeated actions of opening and closing the pages by having part of the pages change colors linked to the opening angle of the page, as you can see here. On another page, we aim to enhance the ageability of the book, where the first user sees the page restored to its original appearance, but with prolonged interaction, the page starts to slowly change color and show signs of wear and tear of, of the digital users. In all, this prototype focused on conveying and enhancing the material experience. Um, the, a virtual reality prototype that was created had a slightly different focus, aiming to link the material experience to the narrative engagement of the book. Another key aspect that inspired this prototype was based on the comments from participants uh, that they really enjoyed the enlarged book in the VR experience that was developed earlier as a way of emerging into the books. Various elements of this book were interactable, com comparable to the original. Dames en heren, hier volgt een belangrijke mededeling. Het handje tap is de honderdduizendste bezoeker van deze tentoonstelling. Het tap en zijn baasje is dit en top. Other elements take inspiration from the narrative of the book. Such as uh, sounds uh, to augment uh, the, the, the airplane engine. As you can hear here. In other cases, the experience refers to the materiality of the book, using sounds of, of sliding or tearing paper parts. In one example, we aim to match the experience also on the effective level, where the fear of damaging the book by having a part tear loose was linked to the fear expressed by the main character of the book. The VR experiences also use snippets from the original 1960s radio play vinyl recordings, which originally accompanied the book, which you can hear throughout this video. In this paper we present a new application of the material experience framework, outside the context of material development. We believe that this could be a first step towards a material-driven design methodology for cultural heritage HCI. We expect that to be able to take further inspiration from the already existing material-driven design methods, also looking towards other methods for characterization beyond the one presented here, and extending the approach in more detail regarding design explorations. We also found that characterizing the material experience of the digital representations, 
the, the prior VR experience was very useful to elicit reactions which went unnoticed with the physical books, such as the VR experience drawing participants' attention to the sound of a page turning or the lack of flexibility of paper. Furthermore, we focused only on the use phase of these artifacts, uh, and this methodology might also be further extended to, to uh, understanding materiality and material experience during, for instance, the creation or the conservation of artifacts. Challenges of using material experience insights uh, relate to the disentangling the individual material experiences, but also disentangling the material experience from, for instance, the narrative experience, and potentially also the experience of other kind of contextual uh, levels of storytelling. Another aspect that was challenging uh, is our still poor understanding of the role of multisensory interactions uh, and what role they play in our learning and enjoyment of cultural heritage experiences. And I think we should ultimately strive for experiential authenticity, where the design choices support getting across something that is experienced as authentic, uh, which might not necessarily be the same as something being the most realistic in the sensorial sense. In terms of limitations, we must acknowledge that many Practical considerations of using XR equipment in an exhibition context were not addressed in this study. We believe uh, various technological issues also still need to be addressed, such as addressing social interaction in VR and XR, and also better linking the physical and digital worlds in order to achieve a truly viable and desirable experience. In terms of generalizing the results, we expect that using surrogate, ar surrogate artifacts, like we did with the pop-up books, um, might not be applicable or viable in all cases. Also, we realize that pop-up books are rather familiar artifacts, which might not, which likely is not the case for many other collection items. Uh, this likely affects participants' experience uh, as they know how to interact with something, but also might be able to ascribe more concrete meanings to things that they are familiar with. In terms of future work, we envision that evaluating the prototypes will help to validate the methodology, um, that we can um, extend the experiential characterization beyond the use of the, pro of the objects, um, and extend the methodology spe specifically in terms of tools and methods for the design phase, so how to be able to use the insights that are generated.